What up techies? Welcome back to our channel. Scientists have been running the Large Hadron Collider for years to find new particles that make up our universe. Now, they have finally discovered a new particle, the Higgs boson. This particle is responsible for giving other particles mass. Without it, our universe would be very different. The discovery of the Higgs boson is just one example of the importance of the Large Hadron Collider. By exploring the building blocks of our universe, scientists hope to unlock even more secrets about the nature of reality itself. Thanks to the tireless efforts of these researchers, we are slowly but surely learning more about the world around us and how it came to be. The Large Hadron Collider is the largest and most powerful particle accelerator ever created. It is located at the European Particle Physics Laboratory in Switzerland. However, what precisely is a particle accelerator, and why is it necessary to have one? The Large Hadron Collider is a machine that accelerates subatomic particles to extremely high energies in a contained setting. This allows researchers to study the interaction that occurs after the acceleration, which is essentially the LHC, helping researchers test theoretical predictions and determine whether or not they have any flaws. It is possible to recreate scenarios using the Large Hadron Collider, such as the conditions that prevailed a billionth of a second after the Big Bang. These include conditions that have not been observed in nature since a few microseconds after the Big Bang. When news spread worldwide that physicists had discovered ghost particles for the first time inside an atom smasher, it was obvious what equipment they used. Neutrinos are notoriously elusive, which is why the discovery news made waves. The particle in question, the neutrino, opens a new window for scientists' care. This facility is so important to modern scientific research that if there is any headline about subatomic particles, the Large Hadron Collider will most likely be involved. Supernova explosions neutrinos can pass undetected by cosmic rays, radioactive decay, and other processes because they have zero electrical charges and nearly zero mess. They are also six million times lighter than an electron and almost never react with any form of matter. This elusive nature causes people to liken neutrinos to ghosts. But if you try hard enough, you can catch neutrinos, but you must try very hard. A few experiments before now have discovered neutrinos. Similarly, when a particle travels at the speed of light through a light slowing medium such as water, it produces a faint blue glow. Scientists find this glow fascinating when a neutrino strikes an atomic nucleus directly. However, this method only detects neutrino signatures as they pass through the Earth, coming from the Sun. It does not, for instance, give any insight into the type of high-energy neutron that is produced when particles smash into each other. As can be the first thing that needs to be done is to cause neutrinos to collide with the atomic nuclei on the metal plates, which will result in the production of particle biproducts. When the emulsion was developed and the particles were analyzed, the next step was already familiar to older photographers. The byproducts of the emulsion reacted with the neutrino byproducts, leaving imprints of the outlines of the particles as they traveled through the layers of the emulsion leaving their marks they could determine which of the three particle flavors of neutrino they had detected. The flavors are tau, muon, and electron. This result assured them that they had picked the right spot inside the enormous LHC ring to detect neutrinos, and also that their new detector was actually able to see them. The facer new is superior to the experiment that came before it in a number of ways. For example, the Super Cameo candy required you to weigh only 29 kilograms. It was also made from leftover parts of the sun. Recall that we mentioned three varieties of neutrinos. Town neutrinos are the rarest and most challenging to detect. In fact, before the advent of phasers and U, neutrinos were virtually undetectable. Town neutrinos had only been spotted 10 times the first time, sufficient to detect distinct flavors of neutrinos. However, it can also differentiate between neutrinos and anti-neutrinos, which is where things start to get interesting. You may recall that we stated that neutrinos do not possess a charge. This information may appear to be contradictory. However, both neutrinos and anti-neutrinos are electromagnetically chargeless. The opposite charge actually stands for a neutron's lepton number, which is a type of quantum number that is used to describe the properties of subatomic particles. When it comes to neutrinos, there are a lot of problems that scientists don't have answers to just yet. For instance, they do not know the difference between a neutrino and an anti-neutrino. They will be able to learn more about neutrinos with the help of a facer, and a U the team behind the facer knew said they would spend 2022 chasing and capturing 10,000 or more neutrinos. This will help answer questions like where matter comes from and why so much of it is dark. When scientists investigate supernovas, you expect them to observe the sky overhead, right? You'll be surprised to know where astronomers have been looking in recent years. Even though there are an infinite number of stars in the universe, supernova are extremely rare. The frequency with which stars explode is impossible to calculate. Even in the galaxy that we call home, the Milky Way, some observations suggest that we could have anywhere from one to three supernovas in this century. Still, the most recent one in recorded history occurred more than 400 years ago. 
Four supernova have been close enough to Earth to leave their signature in the trees, so how does this work? The clue is in the abundance of a radioactive isotope called carbon-14 or radiocarbon. Robert Breckenridge's and Go scientists discovered this at the University of Colorado Boulder. He and his colleagues found what could be the fingerprint of nearby ancient supernova tree rings dating back 15,000 years. This is when four supernova have been close enough to Earth to leave their signature in, compared to the other forms of naturally occurring carbon. The amount of radiocarbon found on Earth is negligible. When cosmic rays enter the atmosphere, they interact with local nitrogen atoms to kick off a nuclear reaction that produces radiocarbon. Since cosmic rays constantly stream through space, Earth receives a more or less steady supply of radiocarbon. If you know where to look, you will find radiocarbon. For example, some of this can be found naturally in tree ring fossils. Isotopes of radiocarbon are formed in the upper atmosphere as it is bombarded by cosmic trees that are not located near the equator and grow during the warm months, but go dormant during the winter. This pattern of growth and non-growth forms a ring inside the wood that makes up the tree, and you can observe the ring when the tree is felled. The rings near the surface of the tree are the newest, and they age as the ring approaches the tree's center. Counting the rings can reveal the age of a tree, and one practical application of this is to determine how researchers can calculate the age of ancient structures by analyzing the pattern of tree rings present in the wood used in their construction. Breckenridge utilized this information to determine what might occur to tree rings in the event of a supernova. He reasoned that a nearby supernova would emit vast amounts of what is known as gamma radiation radioactivity or carbon absorbed by a tree, which would make the rings more radioactive than one another to test how valid the supernova hypothesis is breaking bridge, and his colleagues checked the record books. They compiled a list of known supernova over the last 40,000 years. They were able to trace the supernova through the nebula supernova remnants they left behind. Then, they compared this list to the record of radiocarbon spikes and tree rings from the same period. What did they discover? All eight of the supernovas closest to the Earth seem to have matched periods of spikes in radiocarbon. For example, the Valor supernova, which occurred about 12,000 years ago and was located approximately 2,300 light years from Earth, was associated with a rise in radiocarbon of 3%. The G114 3 plus 0.3 supernova, which occurred approximately 7,700 years ago and was located about 2,300 light years from Earth, was associated with a rise in radiocarbon of 2%. There is also the Valor Jr., believed to have occurred approximately 28 centuries ago. Scientists are currently attempting to verify Breaking Ridge's discovery. They are anticipating that the tree ring method will assist them in pinpointing the exact timing of many supernovas that have been a challenge for them to predict to date. In addition, they anticipate that they will acquire a deeper understanding of the process by which stars explode. Thank you for joining us on our continued journey through the cosmos. What are your thoughts on the mysteries of the universe? Share them with us in the comments section down below.